Right, we're here today at a typical commercial fishery. Um, Travelling like I do up and down the country, fishing lots of different venues, I think it's important that you feel comfortable. So I always try and set up in exactly the same way, same routine every time. So even if you're at an alien venue, at least you feel confident. Obviously baits and methods will change the venues, but your box, your tray, your rollers, your kit, I do it in the same routine every time, so at least I feel comfortable. So that's box down, tray on, rollers up. Uh, we'll talk about rollers in a bit more detail about how we position them. Bait immediately behind me, rod bag, top kits, net bag, everything tidy, everything simple, everything is reachable. Um, just so at least you feel comfortable, even if you're not somewhere you're familiar with. Um, Nets, most venues you have to put your nets in 15 minutes before the start of the match. Um, one thing with nets is I do always tie my keep nets back just simply with a piece of string tied on the end of the net and a bank stick. I think that's one of the most important things about catching down the margins is you're catching fish that are patrolling up and down. If you just chuck your nets in normally, those carp have got to go around that unnatural object and you've just then got to hope that they come back into where you're fishing, which chances are they won't. With them pegged right back, they're out of the way. The carp aren't being affected by them. They can swim up and down a foot out of the bank and not be spooked. And obviously we've all had days where we've got hooked fish that have gone under nets or round nets, behind nets. They can't, they can go underneath them if the margin's deep enough, but it's not an issue because you can just pull them straight back out again. There's nothing they can actually get caught on. Um, as I say, it's a typical commercial. I've only been here once before. I've got a margin rig set up. I've got a deck rig and a shallow rig for 13 metres. I'm sure I know people who fish the venue and there's a lot of fish in it. I'm sure between those three methods that we can catch. Um, there are other options, but like I say, I try and keep things simple. So same setup every time, simple rigs, simple baits, everything comfortable and hopefully we'll catch a load of fish. We mentioned in the intro about um, setting up the same every time and we mentioned rollers. You have to consider rollers in a little bit more depth maybe than some people think. Um, obviously you have to get them positioned correctly. Generally you want your first one maybe what's that three and a half four meters away from your box and then obviously your rear roller so your pole balances and doesn't tip up. Um, I like to keep mine as low as I possibly can. Um, if I'm sitting in a low position and the ground behind me is slightly raised, then I'll actually use the spikes, dig it in the ground so I can go across the ground. That's just a personal preference. I just like to keep everything as low as I can. The other thing to consider is I much prefer a double roller. Um, obviously you're shipping your main pole back. If during the day you start to come in close or in the edge, so you're not using your whole pole, the worst thing that can happen with a single roller is every time you ship back, your other pole goes with it and eventually it will fall on the ground. So a double roller just allows you to ship back without affecting the other pole. The other advantage that I like with a double roller is actually the centre bar. Today I'm shipping back through a very tight position. I've got a tree that side, brambles that side, so I have to ship back in a very specific place to get the pole behind me each time. How I've set the rollers up is that specific place. If I go against the bar on both rollers, I know that that will go through that hole perfectly every time. So these I actually use as a guide to get my pole exactly where I want it. Some days if there's nothing behind you, it doesn't matter. You can do it here, there, anywhere. But when it's tight like that, I much prefer just to spend a little time getting them set up in the right place. But now I can ship back without looking every time as long as I'm against that. Another thing to consider when we're talking about rollers and how your pole's laid out is when you're fishing down the margin. Sometimes, obviously, when you hook a big fish, you need to add joints. It's no good having all your pole behind you because you can't get the angle. When you go down the edge, break your pole down. I do it into two sections. So when you want to add a fish, it's easily movable and you can just follow the fish out. Again, that's where a double roller comes in. If I slide this section rather than lift it, then I'm not disturbing the rest of the pole. Well, 
just saying, I've just, as I've said that, I've hooked one and it has torn off. So I have had to put joints on for this one. Again, because we've only got that two joints, now I'm back here, it's, it's easily manageable and movable. And I'll just take those joints off and lay them back on the roller. Quick mention now on plumbing. Um, obviously we mentioned getting set up, getting everything comfortable. The next thing to do is plumb. Sounds simple, but there's a couple of things you need to consider. Um, I like to plumb up just to the bottom of the body. Um, some people plumb up dead depth with just the bristle showing like that. Um, to plumb dead depth, your float needs to sit with the plummet on it, how it would without the plummet on it, basically. I prefer just to plumb to the bottom of the body just to give myself that little bit of line on the deck, especially down the margin where it's getting wafted around and there's a lot of fish there. I want to know that there's a little bit of give should my float get moved around a bit, that my bait is still on the bottom. So plumb up there, that's spot on, dead in line with the, an end of a reed there so I know where it is. Um, now I need to mark that depth, which is something I think most people do. But something to consider there is what a lot of people would now do is to hook your rig up to the end of the pole, get your tip X and mark it. And you would now assume if you lose that rig, want to swap that rig for any reason, you can simply put another rig on, slide the float up to that line and you're fishing. That's not technically true because you're not allowing for the stretch. So if this bit of line isn't exactly the same on your next rig, so the stretch isn't exactly the same, you won't be fishing the correct depth. The way to mark it once you've plumbed up is have a relaxed line, hook the end of the pole, and then mark there so you can already see the actual depth I want is there, not there. So this is actual depth. So you can see that the depth we've marked before is at least three inches over depth. So relax your line and mark your depth there. Mentioned at the start um, that I've got a margin rig set up, a long deck rig and a shallow rig. Um, I was just going to talk you through the shallow rig because that's been by far the best rig today. And I've caught on it in various ways. It's quite interesting how one simple rig, you can do lots of things with it. It's basically, 016 power micron to an 18 rigger with a 6 mil pellet. I've played around with 6s and 8s, but 6 has been best. So 0.2 gram matrix series 2 float, just takes two number 10 shot, dead simple. And then I've got probably two foot of line above the float. A lot of people use a little short line when predominantly today I've been slapping. Um, I prefer just a bit longer line. Um, a, it keeps the pole tip away from the, the fish a bit so it doesn't spook them. B, if you miss a bite or snatch at something, you don't get a tangle and it gives you other options. I've had a few fish shallow properly today, like feeding four mils, and then they were a little bit deeper. So I can simply move my float up a bit, spread the two shot out, and I've got a proper two foot shallow rig. Um, it just gives you options. Most of my fish, believe it or not, have actually been caught slapping down the margin. Um, that margin's probably five foot deep just off the reeds, fishing a foot deep. I've caught some really nice carp and had a good run of fish down there on a top five. So don't just think when you're fishing shallow or slapping or whatever you're doing with it, mugging, it doesn't all have to be long out there. Have a look at your options and obviously reed bed, deep margin, there's bound to be fish cruising up in the water down margins like that. Obviously, if you can see fish, you can target them, but we haven't really seen any today. Um, but just a dead simple rig like that, I've done basically four different things with it and found the best line and caught the bulk of my fish down there just slapping off the reeds. The last thing to consider really is bait. Um, typical commercials, you can get away with a really cheap day. Um, I didn't know how this venue was fishing. Um, I've not been here for a while. So I've gone with the tried and trusted pellet and corn. 
you've got the pellet option. I've got some four mils here, only a bag. Um, you could feed them down the edge, which has been better today because I think it's quite deep and it's got the fish on the deck. I've pinged them when I've been fishing shallow, um, so they're very versatile. Micros, I intended to fish down the margin, but it's not been right today. But again, a bag of those is plenty. That's what I've got left from a tin of corn. Still got probably a quarter of it left. Corn is my favourite go-to hook bait on a commercial if I'm not sure how it's fishing. Carp and skimmers, tench, anything will always eat corn. So that's a safe bet. The only other thing on my tray is my hook bait for fishing shallow. Um, we've got three different types of pellet in here. We've got six mil hard pellet, which has been the best bait today for slapping. If I'm mugging or fishing shallow properly, I prefer a good old fashioned eight mil scrattings pellet. These are very, very buoyant and sink very slowly. So if we're swinging at fish, we can see they're the best option by a mile. The only other thing I've got is a red six mil, purely because a few of my friends just recently have been having a lot of success on red pellets. I haven't tried them yet, um, but they're there if I need to. Feeding wise, obviously when I've been slapping down the edge, I've not been feeding at all, which is why I've got all this bait left out of, there was only a bag of each to start with. Um, pinging, obviously when I was fishing shallow out, down the edge, I've just gone with probably a third of a big pot of micros and corn at the start, um, which wasn't right because the micros were just sending the fish into a frenzy. So then I've simply just toss potted in a few four mils and a few grains of corn just with the little pot. I've cut the big pot out completely. Some days big potting's right, some days throwing's right, some days kinder potting's right. You've literally just got to play around with it on the day and find out what's right. One thing I would say is when I went in initially with the big pot, first time I've gone in I've had liners and foul hookers and it's been horrible. The best thing to do then is just leave it alone to settle down. So I've gone back out fishing shallow, completely let it calm down, not fed anymore. And then when I have gone back on it, I've gone in with the little pot and four mils and corn. Um, if it's all swirly and liners and foul hookers, just leave it alone, forget about it, let it settle down and then go back in differently. Right, we've had a lovely few hours fishing here on Magpie Lake at Rookery Waters. Um, just goes to show, get your set up right, everything efficient, everything where it should be. We've had no mishaps, just a lovely day's fishing, probably two or three quid's worth of bait. We've thrown straight back probably 20 pound of quality roach. So get everything set up efficiently and you can get bags of fish like this quite easily. I'm out of breath now. <laughs>